Let us talk about solar concentrating power to feed into a Rankine cycle. So these things have been out and talked about since the 60s and the 70s. They built fields where they've had mirrors and they focus those mirrors or heliostats so that the direct, the sunlight gets focused on one little receiver. And just think if you had a football field or two football fields of these out there, you could focus a lot of energy up there. The sunlight would be very intense, right? And that's why and the temperatures can be very, very, very high. Here they don't show it, but let me modify a little bit. You could take an oil or liquid metal and run in a loop down to a drum and then back up again. Why? Because you can really change the temperature of a liquid metal or an oil or something without boiling it. And if you boil it up there, then it's a lot larger volume. And now you've got to have big pipes to bring the vapor down, where it's just small pipes to bring oil or liquid metal up and then liquid metal down again. And then you bring it down, and this goes in a loop, and it'll get spanking hot down here. It'll transfer its heat in a steam drum or a steam generator to water that comes this way. Now you bring out steam out of this steam drum pass it through this turbine that drives the generator, electric generator, to make electricity and sell electricity. Out of the turbine, you have some high-quality steam or uh, slightly superheated vapor, and you bring it over to a condenser. This condenser is shown that it's air-cooled condenser. Put it through a pump and then back again. So this is the Rankine cycle. This has been kicked around for a while. It's uh, just difficult or expensive to build and and then uh, maintain. Uh, I don't know where there's an existing facility. Maybe there's one in California, but they work great in the desert climates. What's the other solar to make electricity? Photovoltaics. Uh, what's that? Direct sunlight hits electrons, pops them off, and then poop, you got electricity right away. You don't put the energy into any water no phase change or anything, photovoltaics, PV, right? Uh, CPS Energy's big on PV. CPS Energy's unfortunately not interested in solar concentrating source for generating electricity. So you can integrate solar storage of thermal energy because when the sun goes down, a lot of times you still like to make electricity. So here's a design, I'll just show it to you. So you have troughs and you have oil that goes in a circuit and it then goes through a heat exchanger where it boils the water. So the water is boiled in the boiler, steam boiler. Then the oil is cooled and it goes back through the solar trough field. Okay. Once the water is boiled, then it goes through the steam turbine, then the condenser, pump, and that's your traditional cycle. You have to reject heat somewhere. Where are they showing you to reject it to and how? This was a large concrete multi-storied cooling tower. And one of the reasons it works so well is it intakes water near the bottom, I mean not water, air, surrounding dry air from the bottom or even moist air, whatever air, outdoor air it is. And you have water spraying in here and then you'll get a natural chimney effect you don't have to have a fan, it'll naturally, hot air rises, cold air sinks, the chimney will come up. Also, it helps is the molar mass of water vapor. What's the molar mass of water? 18. What's the molar mass of dry air? Around 30, 29, 30. So even water vapor is light, cloud, you know, it goes up in the air. So it'll have a great chimney effect. You don't have to have a fan or a pump to move the air. Okay, now let's take a look at storing the thermal energy. When the sun is really hot, maybe it's making so much hot oil, you can divert some of the hot oil down to another heat exchanger where the oil is going to be cooled and hot salt or cold salt coming out of here becomes hot on this top side. So the salt, uh, maybe it started with a full tank of cold salt and as you want, you transfer the salt to an upper tank, and it fills up that upper tank as the level in the lower tank goes down. And now you have a tank full of hot salt. As a design engineer, you size it, and that 
to make it work for the overcapacity of the thermal uh, intensity in the hot part of the day with the sun's out. Then when the start, sun starts to wane, these valves change, and you can then even not, you can shut off the flow of oil to the solar trough because maybe the sun is now set, and the pump could run the oil backwards through the same heat exchanger. This time the oil isn't giving up heat, it's absorbing the heat, and the salt runs backwards and recharges or flows into the lower tank, which is your cooler tank. And so it's transferring heat out of the salt into the oil, comes up and drives the boiler to make electricity. So what you can do is you could see that as a day in the morning, noon, evening, midnight, the sun is up, it's coming up, you're starting to make electricity, you get up to about 100% capacity for the steam cycle. This rest of the energy you push off to storage, thermal storage, and then when the sun starts to come down later in the day, instead of it just all going to zero, this is when the sun is set, you take some of that energy out of the thermal storage to continue to generate electricity. So those are the concepts that are out there.